Hey everybody, it's Christian Pedersen here with San Diego Prep Insider. Let's take a look at Division 5 for the first time this year, now that training camp is upon us. We got teams moving down from Division 4 that include Sweetwater, Valhalla, Southwest, El Centro, Monta Vista, and Kearney. All of them, like we said, moving down from Division 4 to Division 5. Remaining in Division 5 from last year is San Ysidro, Hoover, Southwest San Diego, El Cajon Valley, Castle Park, Mar Vista, Claremont, and Vincent Memorial. Teams from Division 5 last year who moved down also to Division 5 AA are clearing out some of the size of this division. So it is a couple of teams smaller. So of these 13 teams that we discuss, eight of them will end up making the Division 5 playoffs. Looking through all of this, Man, Division 5, from what we have seen the last couple of years, it, it seemed like there was one or two teams that were anointed. Like, yeah, you're you're the team to beat. Both of them that I think were circled last year moved on to Division 4 in Classical Academy and Crawford. So it's kind of a cleared-out field ready for a new champion. Looking through all these schedules... I always throw out the caveat of you never know until you actually start playing football, what you're going to wind up with some of these teams because there's so much turnover. There's key position turnover. What's Mar you know, Mar Vista's got to find a new quarterback after their quarterback last year was it or the last couple of years was a really signature type of dude. Sometimes you just, you, you can conjecture all about it you want, but you never really know until there's a sample size. So please keep in mind, a lot of this is just very topical trying to extrapolate out what little we do know against the sample size of the schedules we look at. I think it falls into a couple of categories for who I really am looking at here in Division 5 in terms of teams like, hey, keep an eye on them. That could be somebody to watch this year. The first group of that is sort of the de facto returners. You kind of know what you're getting into. You know, the next one's up, if you will, in the Division 5 race, and that is San Ysidro, and Hoover. I think that San Ysidro and Hoover, both, like I said, the teams that the last couple of years, you've seen the building blocks as they've moved forward, and they seem to have an identity that they have figured out and are now able to, hopefully this year, without those Crawfords or Classicals or anyone returning who's sort of the obvious D5 team to beat, world ender, if you will. I think that Hoover, with Sir Darius Autry as their running back, plus they're adding some pieces, moving from some other schools around. They're going to have a new quarterback this year. I think that it's now Sir Darius Autry surrounded with an offense that is capable of letting a running back cook. Like, sometimes you have to rely on a guy a little bit too much. You know, that vibe, defense adjusts. The production just isn't world ender enough. Sir Darius Autry is going to have, I think, a lot more open lanes to run this year as that Hoover offense grows around it. So I like them. San Ysidro, you have seen them the last couple of years moving from upstart underdog to team that was in you know serious consideration for some of the chunks of last year. So they're also just on those building blocks that I like where they are going. I have no reason. You're past the reason to doubt them type of phase. Next chunk is... You know, the the Division Four teams, you always like to look at them and be like, are there any teams coming down who maybe, even though the math pushed them down a couple years, they're really, they're ready to go back to being a D4 team. They're going to make a quick pit stop here. You could look at probably Kearney being that team if Brody Strump continues to develop in a way that is you know, able to show that he was not a byproduct of just having a good senior receiver when he showed up at you know, at Kearney's quarterback. If he can continue to be an offensive air raid downhill successful passer, then Brody Strump, I think, can help lead a Kearney offense to a lot of success at the Division Five level and make it a quick pit stop for them before they get that championship, score those points necessary rubric-wise to get back up. If he's going to take some adjusting time and if the program around him is going to take some adjusting time, then maybe they go down from, you know, de facto team to in the mix, but I don't think they're anything below in the mix. I really think Kearney will have a solid offense this season, and it's just a question of how high is the upside going to be with it. You know, is it going to be, you know, 500 yards, five touchdowns a game? Is it going to be 250 and three touchdowns? Like, somewhere in there, they're going to get a lot of wins. It'll just be a question of how many. For the rest of the Division Four teams coming down, 
this turns into a brutal reality of who is stuck in really difficult schedules from league play and who isn't. Valhalla has a pretty tough uh, stretch of having to play Steel Canyon and Christian and Mount Miguel, El Cap, Monta Vista, El Cajon Valley. Like, that's two Division II teams in that mix there. And that's not something that's on a ton of the other uh, schedules. El Cajon Valley, they will have to t- face off with Montgomery, Classical Academy, Crawford, El Cap. They're going to play some teams that are up a division. Some of that, like, you, you ask yourself, what is... You know, what do I like as a football team? Do I like somebody that they've shown me that they can win regardless of the schedule strength? They're able to put up 35 points a game, wins, wins, wins. Or, okay, they lost three really tough ones to teams that were several divisions above them because of league requirements, but that taught them football. You know, that showed them the speed of the game, made them metal on metal type tougher. That becomes kind of the debate because, you know, Valhalla could go through that fire and come out the other end really cooking because they figured it out and they know how to play or attempt to play or they've seen what it's like playing up where some of the other schedules end up being a little bit lighter. I think that probably of that group, nobody stands out to me as the de facto definitive, but I, I, I'm really curious with... With Val, I think that we've seen some definite improvement with Coach Cherry taking over. What the culture is surrounding Valhalla, what the enthusiasm is, what the all the fill in the verb there, and that to me translates to continued growth and continued success. And I like the the balance of they're they're also despite having a couple of those Division two games, going to have a couple of games. They're going to take on Mar Vista. They're going to take on San Ysidro. They're going to take on El Cajon Valley. They're going to get have all the litmus tests within the division. So we should know a pretty good sample size by the time you get to those playoffs. That you know Valh- Valhalla could be somebody that maybe comes in at like a four seed and becomes my early first dark horse. Further down, at Mar Vista, they lose quarterbacks to graduation, but they also you know, get more soft their schedule. I like the games that they have scheduled this year to be very winnable. This is a Mar Vista team that I love in the top half of this kind of category of, of teams who are in the mix early in this season because even with the graduation of Alex Wojcik, they are returning... Elijah Clark as probably their signature receiver and a, a fair amount of younger pieces that got tried in certain ways and had that safety blanket uh, of Wojcik's being able to just tuck the ball and run last year, but weren't necessarily like not playing on the varsity field. So they're returning a decent enough amount that I think combined with a very competitive, balanced, winnable schedule I don't hate it. I like Mar Vista as a team that I'm early in on in terms of this Division 5 race. Rounding it out for the teams that are kind of also maybe just circling that bubble. We talked a little bit about El Cajon Valley. They have Paris Dixon, who's one of the signature wide receiver safety sort of skill players in this division, maybe in the county, potentially highlight real stuff every single week. They're always in it. They lose Kyle Gordon. They're running back of great note and production in the last couple of years. So they will have to find a new signature offense. Um, I don't hate it. I don't love like they're a really good team. They have some tough scheduled games, but I think they are another one like that fall where they are in that middle pack rounding out the rest of it. Not to say that teams like Sweetwater, Castle Park, Monta Vista, you know, Claremont, like, not to say that these teams aren't in it or or any shape and form like done for the season or reasons not to talk about them, but this is not an in depth forty five minute podcast. This is we're just trying to keep this relatively quick to give somewhat of a rundown of hey, here are the people that you should be looking for this season in Division Five. Let us know though who you think is going to ball out, who you think is going to perform, who you think is going to be amazing, who you think we need to come check out, or just week by week how you think it's all going. Follow us along at San Diego Prep Insider. Subscribe on YouTube. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Talk to you guys soon.